A lot of people ask me, I, I'll be, if I live to September 1st, I'll be preaching 50 years. Amen. If I live to September the 1st, I'll be pastoring the same church for 45 years. Amen. And pastoring somewhere for 49 and a half years. That's just God. And I'm asked a lot what motivates me. And I may deal with that a little this morning. But I want you to go into the Gospel of Luke. I'm not going to give you a foaming at the mouth message. But I am going to give you straight truth this morning. That's burning in my soul. Luke chapter 16. And I want to read a rather lengthy passage. And verse number 19. If the church is there, say amen. amen. We've heard some great sermons for practical Christianity this week. And I want to say this morning, mine tonight will be that way. But I want to say unapologetically, this morning's message is not just for the Christian. Amen? There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover the dogs came and licked his sores. It came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And seeing Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth the good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But he is comforted and thou art tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fix. So they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him that they had the prophet, uh, had Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they persuade it, be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. That's a powerful passage of Scripture. Amen. I checked my records, Brother Rich, this morning, and as far as I know, 
this message will make over 11,200 11, sermons that I've preached since my calling. Every day of my life, I am focused in on one thing. The world and their needs and the lostness of humanity. I will not lie to you. I sometimes get tired. I won't lie to you. It gets weary once in a while. Once in a while, I just soon take off in the car on a Sunday morning and head down to the beach. But you say, what keeps you from getting down on 77 and heading south? There's something motivates me every day of my life. I believe in hell. I want to say it again. I believe in hell. This story that I read to you is not a fictitious Amen. story. Amen. This story I read to you is not a parable. Because parables never used proper names. This story I read to you was a real story a story that everyone will face, that one day you'll die. Oh, I believe in hell. I want you all to know also I believe in heaven. I believe there's a place we're going to one day where there'll be no sickness, no sorrow, no pain, no heartache, and the former things will be passed away. There'll be no crying, for he'll wipe away our tears. I believe in salvation, that God can save anybody, anytime, anywhere. I believe in eternal security. If God saves that somebody, he'll save them forever. I believe in justification as if I never sinned. I believe in the inspiration of the scripture that they are inspired and infallible and inerrant. And they can be trusted in. Somebody help me. I'm starting to. And they don't need correction. But this morning, Lois Gale, I want to preach on this. I believe in hell. I know the rationalist says there is no God, therefore there can be no hell. I know that those that ridicule may say this, I, I believe there's a God, but it is silly to think Millions of disembodied people burning in a flame somewhere. Just silly to think that. I say to you, let God be true. And every man alive. Oh, I know that religion, religion says Christian science says, hell's an error in the human mind. The JWs say the wicked will be annihilated. The Mormons say, well, everybody eventually will be saved. I say to you this morning, based upon the word of God, I believe in hell. I tell you what I've done, not to prepare for the message, just to prepare my mind. I went out and listened to about 20 classic sermons about hell. Not to get notes, not to find extra material. I listened to a band preach the other day on the roll call. 
in hell. I preach to listen to one called hellfire. And I know we're living in a time when, Brother Zach, that uh, we're desensitized and that doesn't bother us anymore. But I want you to know hell, and I want to talk first of all, the place of hell is a real, literal place. It's not fictitious. It's a real, literal place. It is a place where if you go into eternity, you'll die there forever and suffer there forever. I read it's a hot place. I heard one sermon called Hellfire. He said he'll come with vengeance, with flaming fire. It's a hot place. Can I use a word that's not a word? I hear people say, Brother Denny, well, I'm living hell on earth. Well, this is not a word, but I'm going to magnify something. Okay? The baddest day on this earth will not be compared to the best day in hell. You might say, I'm going through awful stuff and it's hell. I'll say to you, be careful how you use that word because the baddest day on this earth ain't equal to the best day in hell. It's a hot place. It's a horrible place. I was thinking about it. You have sensation in hell. Did you know that? You'll be able to hear because we just heard that. You'll be able to talk. You'll be able to feel the flame. And I'm not going to get real deep in this and down in the weeds in this, but it said there'll be darkness there, but Brother Chad, and uh, the kind of flame that'll be in hell will be what they call black fire. And if you do a study, and I will not bore you with all the, all the words, but black fire is the hottest, most extreme fire. You can suffer. I don't know about you. I don't even like it when I burn my finger. And I cannot imagine what it would be like to be in a place of black fire where the weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth and an awful, terrible place like that and be there for eternity. It's a horrible place. By the way, you'll be separated from God. And you said, well, I'll be down there with my friends. You won't be paying attention to nobody down there but yourself. It's going to be horrible. There'll be suffering. As a pastor for all these years, One of the things that hurts me so much, I've watched people suffer physically. But I want you to know the worst pain that anybody ever suffers on this planet, and people have suffered terrible pain, will not be equal to the pain and the suffering and the anguish It'll be a hungry place. There'll be nothing to fulfill your desire. 
that rich man had unquenchable thirst. He couldn't even get a, listen, he couldn't even get by request a dip of water. A dip of water. Not, he said, I just want a little sip. Unquenchable thirst. Be a place where you'll be never satisfied. Whew. How many glad you're going to heaven? <laughs> Secondly, I'm preaching this, I know you see a little differently. I'm just trying to deal with you. I'm not trying to be over dramatic. How in the world could be, be over dramatic about that? It's dramatic enough. But I want to secondly call your attention to the people in hell. To the people in hell. The rich man was there and the beggar was there. By the way, all kinds of people. If you're human, whether you're educated, or uneducated, whether you're rich or whether you're poor, or somewhere in between, whether you're black, white, or whatever race you may be. If you die without Christ, you'll be in hell. So, by the way, you don't have to qualify to go there. Just not receive Christ. Am I preaching, Chad? By the way, I, I, I did notice something. This man in this room mentioned five brothers. Did he not? So he had a family. I want to tell you, some of your family are going to go to hell. Think about a brother of mine or my dad or mom. By the way, that rich man was somebody's son. And he was somebody's father. He was somebody's relative. To think that my wife, my son, my relative, my cousin, my neighbor would go to hell just absolutely as abhorrent to me. Amen. That little girl, I... I want to recognize you. I saw you getting saved uh, Wednesday night. I, I wanted to come up and say something to you, but I'm so glad you're saved because, honey, can I tell you, you'll never go to this place I'm talking about because you've been washed in the blood. And she's nodding her head real big at me right now. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Family will be there. I've got one in my family. It breaks my heart that I don't know if he's in heaven or hell. And every once in a while I think, did I do enough? Uh, was I patient enough? Did I, did I say enough? But I'm going to tell you also, I got some friends in hell. So people who, when I was young, I used to confide with. They were my buds. I think one of them in particular, when I played football for the Sissonville Indians, I was right tackle. And over on the other side was a dear boy. He was, the, he was on the other side of the line. I loved him. We were friends. When I got saved, Zach, he went off to the military, to Vietnam, survived Vietnam, came back, and God said to me, 
You need to go out and see him. So I went out and saw my friend, Dustin. I didn't like his lifestyle. I didn't like his alcohol. I know he smoked weed. I know he had all the vices. But I still loved him. And I went out there to my friend. And I asked him, I said, and I won't say his name. I'll, I'll just say it. I asked him, I said, if you died today, do you know you're going to heaven? I used his proper name. And he looked at me and he said, uh, I knew you got saved, John David. That's what he called me. Right? He looked at me and said, I know you got saved. And I hear that you're one of the happiest people in the world. But I can't buy it right now. I got to live out my life a little while longer. Before this thing's over, I'll try to make it right. But right now, I need to enjoy some stuff. Me and my girlfriend going to Virginia. And I won't tell you the whole story. But him and her both were drunk and got tragically killed. And Lois, one of the best friends I ever had, died and most likely went to hell. To this very moment, I give him everything. I give him my, everything I knew about God. But he said no. And ladies and gentlemen, he is in hell, burning and suffering, not because he smoked weed, not because he drank liquor, but because he rejected Christ. Am I preaching? And I tell you what, they're also not just family there and friends there, but they're just plain old folk there. I, 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 I looked on the computer, I Google like you do. I, I just wanted to see this morning an updated count about the frequency of death. I want to update it. 1.8 people die every second. 106 people die every minute. 6,392 people die every hour. 153,424, or excuse me, 63. I got that number right. 153,424 a day. 4,679,452 a month. And 56 million people die a year. And the vast majority of those that die will go to a devil's Hell was not made for you humans. It was not made for you and I. It was made for the devil and his angels. And if you go to hell, you'll go over this preaching. Because, see, there'll be memory in hell. You'll remember that first Sunday of February when the pastor, not trained to scare you, just gave you a number of facts and pointed out your destiny, and you'll remember the sermon while you're in hell suffering forever, and you'll be thinking, why in the world did I let that moment?
Thirdly, I have four, but I may not get there. It's okay. That's right. I could see some of y'all a nervous wreck right now. Did you hear me? I'm going to give you the good part before I leave. There's a pardon you can have from hell. <laughs> you really just don't have to go. <laughs> Amen. The Bible said that the, the rich man died and he was buried and the beggar was carried. I kind of like that. You might not get it, but I'll tell you where that beggar was carried. That beggar was carried right into the presence of Abraham himself and Jesus himself. Amen. Somebody help me preach. I want you to know, here's all it takes. I'm going somewhere. Y'all with me? How many's with me? You better do some praying right now. It takes a personal relationship. Amen. He was wounded for my transgressions and bruised for my iniquities. He bore my sin, was my substitute. He became sin that he became sin that they that had sin doesn't have to have it anymore. He bore it. He took your place. He became your substitute. He suffered a vicarious death. But thank God on the third day he arose. And he's saying to you this morning, you don't have to go. You don't have to end up there. Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I am the door. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, even though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Amen. Thank God, oh, happy day 50 years ago when the high sheriff of heaven came down and arrested my soul and convicted me of sin. And I said, yes, yes to the gospel. And I'm saved and I'm saved and I'm redeemed. Amen. I'm closing. Lois, come please. Oh, there's therefore now no condemnation. I have prior for redemption. I'm kept by the power of God. Oh, one of these days I'm going to have a permanent reunion with my loved ones. I've got a promised resurrection. Amen. Lord himself is going to descend from heaven with a shout. With the voice of archangel and dead in Christ shall rise first. We which rely on man shall be cut up together in the air. And so shall we ever be with Lord. Wow. Now, I'm closing, but I don't want to forget us, the Christian, just with one little word, the plea concerning hell. One of the saddest verses in the Bible is in Psalms where it said, no man cared for my soul. If you got family that's going there, friends that's going there, neighbors that's going there, don't you think you ought to get him arrested? Yeah. And you know, I want to say this, I want to say this, and I want to say it carefully. 
most of our praying, let's be honest, is praying about interceding about somebody that's sick or has got some problem. And I'm for praying for and interceding for sick people. But I wonder, when's the last time you came and interceded for your cousin, your brother, your aunt, your uncle? I say this to you, ladies and gentlemen. We need to get interceding for lost people. And then we need to get involved. He said, I'm scared to talk to people. Get a track and hand it to them. My whole life, I'm not ashamed of it either. Y'all look at me. Has been about one thing. Trying to keep people out of hell. Heads bowed. This is time to be honest. This is time to really take some thought. A young lady coming to get baptized. You go ahead, honey. I'm proud of you. With, and I'm not going to ask you if you're a church member. I'm not going to, there's people already coming and praying for their families and friends. I'm not going to ask you if you have some religious affiliation, now here's what I want to ask you. If you died today, are you 100% positive? If you died today, you know you're going to heaven. Sip up your hand. If you don't know, don't raise them because it won't help you. Thank you. Now, I, I want to take my time. If you're here this morning, and I think you can agree, if you're here this morning, I have tried to handle this as calmly as I can. If you're here this morning, you said, I could not raise my hand, preacher. Look at me. Be careful. I couldn't raise my hand, preacher. I know I'm not saved, preacher. Or at least maybe you don't know for sure you're saved. But you say this morning, I know one thing. I do not want to die and go to hell. And you showed me that I could be saved so simply. I wonder how many of you right now would slip up your hand and say, I'm not a Christian. But before I die, before the Lord comes, I want to know that I know I'm going to heaven. Would you raise your hand? I will not embarrass you. I promise I wouldn't do that. God bless that hand. Is there anyone else? Just say, preacher, I, I do not know. I am frightened. Maybe you're a church member, and man, you've been battling this for a while, but you're not even really saved. You know it. And you say this morning, preacher Smith, I don't know what I'm saved. For sure, I know I'm a member of the church. Maybe you're a member of this one or some other. But you just you got some religion, but you don't know for sure. Sip up your hands. They pray for me. I need to be sure. I need to be sure. Well, I'll tell you what I want to do. I want you to stand and church people. If there's somebody you know in your life that's lost, you might be well to come up around the altar and pray. Would you do it? A neighbor, a friend, a family member? It'd be a good morning. We say we've been revived this week. Dear God, help us intercede. Our Father, I thank you this morning for the sweet Holy Ghost. Lord, I ask you this morning that you would... Uh, deal in this room that you would uh, move on people that those people been here 
for the last year or so that I hadn't responded yet. They've heard me preach on every truth. But I pray, sweet Holy Ghost, move on them, convict them. And I pray for the church member that had doubts and says, oh, my God, I don't believe I am. And I don't want to die and go to hell that they'd come this morning. In Jesus' name.